Alright, so today we're going to look at solving polynomial inequalities algebraically. Okay, and it's a very similar method to when we did graphically, only instead of actually making the graph using the zeros, we are going to have to make what's called an interval table. So today we're going to be practicing this idea of making an interval table. Okay, so same steps as yesterday. First job is going to be to factor it as far as it can go and find the x-intercepts or find the zeros. So let's take a look at our first example. It is partially factored for us, just so we can get this idea, but let's continue our factoring. We know that there's a difference of squares there. And then we have that simple trinomial. I believe we're going to get x plus 2 and x minus 1. So we want to know when is that greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so we know that our x-intercepts, or our zeros, are x equals 1, negative 1, negative 2, and so we have that 1 again. We only need to write it the one time. So we're going to set up this thing called an interval table. You'll see it sometimes different from different teachers or in the textbook. Um, so this is how I like to set it up. So along the left, we're going to list all of the factors. Okay, if we have one twice, we need to either list it twice or we need to list it as a squared. So notice we have x minus 1 squared. Okay, then we have an x plus 1. And then we have an x plus 2. If you had a coefficient, you would want to put that in there as well. Okay, and then at the bottom here, we're going to have our overall sign of f of x. Okay, and then we're going to start setting up our columns. So we want to separate the graph or the function into intervals using all of these zeros. So first we want them to be in numerical order. So really we would have negative 2 is the most left. So our first interval is going to be when x is less than negative 2. Okay, and then we're going to have between negative 2 and negative 1. And then we're going to have from negative 1 to 1. And then the right side of the graph would be when x is greater than 1. So we're looking at all the different intervals. Okay, so in order to fill in the table, I encourage you to do most of this work completely in your head. Think of a number. x is less than negative 2. It can be anything, but you do want it to be kind of close. I go with negative 3. And then you should, you're just going down and plugging negative 3 into all of the factors and deciding is it positive, is the function positive, or is it negative. So if I put negative 3 in here, no matter what, I'm squaring it, so it's going to be positive. If I put negative 3 in here, negative 3 plus 1, it's going to give me a negative. And if I put negative 3 in x plus 2, I'm still going to get a negative. Overall sign, I have two negatives, so overall sign is positive. So the function is positive when x is less than negative 2. Okay, let's go to our next one. Here we have a little bit smaller of an interval, so we do need to think negative 1.5, but I encourage you again, you can still do that pretty much in your head. Okay, so negative 1.5 in here, it's going to be positive no matter what. When we're squaring something, hopefully you can see it's actually positive the whole way across because it doesn't matter. Negative 1.5 in here is going to give us a negative. Negative 1.5 in here is going to give us a positive. And then if we look overall at our signs, we have one negative, so overall negative. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next one, we're going to look at this interval. This is a nice easy one because the number in between is 0, and we can easily see that one. So 0 plus 1 is positive. Again, we don't care about the number, just the sign. 0 plus 2 is positive, and overall, that's positive. Okay, and then we're going to look at our last interval, and that's when x is greater than 1. So pick a number like 2, and we're going to plug it in. 2 plus 1 is positive. 2 plus 2 is still positive, overall positive. Okay, so down at the bottom here is where you find your answers. Oops, sorry. Is where you find your answers. I am looking to know when is this function greater than 0, when is it positive. So our answer is when x is less than negative 2. And then our answer is both these intervals. And when we conclude, because this one includes equal to 0, because at x equals 1, it's equal to 0. We actually want to merge those two intervals together, and basically we can say that this inequality is greater than or equal to 0 when x is greater than negative 1. Okay, so let's just make that conclusion quickly so you can see what it looks like, similar to what we did yesterday. Therefore, then, 
take your original question, x squared minus 1, x squared plus x minus 2, is greater than or equal to 0 when x is less than negative 2 and x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Now, I'm sorry, we should include the negative 2 as well here because we want to know when it's equal to 0 as well, and it's equal to 0 at that place. Okay, so we're going to try another one. All right, this one we have a little bit more work to do, as you can see, because it is not factored for us, so we have to go through our whole process of factor theorem, good practice again, uh, to make sure we get it into factored form. So let's start off proper form, don't forget, let p of x equal x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 3. I believe this one is nice and simple, and 1 is going to work. So therefore, x minus 1 is a factor. So we'll set up our synthetic division. Negative 5, right? Okay, so what we have is we have x minus 1, and we have x squared minus 5x. Plus 3, and we want to know this time when is that less than or equal to 0. Okay, so our zeros, we have x equals 1. And then you can probably see that we're not going to be able to factor this, so we need to use the quadratic formula. So we're going to get 5 plus or minus. Looks like we're going to get root 13 all over 2. Doesn't seem to reduce. Um, we do want to approximate that as a decimal. We need to report our answers with the radical, but just for our chart purposes, we know that that's 4.3 and 0 0.7. And when you plug that into your calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and let's make a table for this one. Okay, we have our three different zeros. Okay, we have x equals 1. We have 0 0.7, so that's going to be a pretty small interval, and then we have 4.3. We're going to list our factors on the left. So we have an x minus 1. When you have something like that, that is um, decimals, you're going to want to just leave it in. So there you might need your calculator a little bit. Just leave it in as the factor, just like that. And then we have our f of x at the bottom. Okay, so our lowest x-intercept is, of course, the 0.7, so we can do everything less than 0.7. Then we can do that one between 0.7 and 1. Then we can do between 1 and 4.3. And then anything greater than 4.3. This is good practice on writing those intervals. All right, so let's choose a value. Let's choose 0 first for this column. That one's nice and easy to see that we're going to get negative, we're going to get positive, overall negative. Okay, then we have to choose a number like 0.8, okay, so you actually have to get out your calculator and punch in um, with 0.8 for the second one anyways. This is going to be negative. When you punch 0.8 into this, you know that you're also going to get negative, and so overall is positive. Double check that if you don't believe me. Over here, we're going to punch in a number like 2. It's probably pretty easy to do in our heads. Here we know we'll get positive. When we punch 2 into this, we're going to get 4. Minus 10 is negative 6 plus 3, so it's going to be negative. Overall negative. And then for the last column, we can do something like 5. We know we're going to get positive. Over here, we're going to get 25 minus 25 plus 3, so that's going to be positive as well and overall positive. Okay, so when reporting our answers, don't forget then, we'll go back to our original question. Therefore then we have x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 3 is 
less than or equal to 0 when we want to look for the ones that were overall negative. So when x is less than, and we're going to occlude again because it's equal. So when it's less than or equal to 5 minus root 13 over 2. And when x is between 1 and 5 plus root 13 over 2. Okay, we'll practice these tables a lot in class tomorrow. And even though they do take up, seem to take up a lot of space, you get used to it pretty quickly. See you tomorrow.